Hey guys, so I'm in the middle of another video at this time, but I wanted to take this time to say thanks for 15,000 subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much and God bless. So today I thought we'd take a look at this Ego 56 volt Gen 3 BMS board. This is the first one I've got my hands on and thanks to Russell Selkirk for sending it in to us. He thought maybe we could take a look at it and figure out what's going on with it. So this board would light up one green LED showing like 20% or greater charge. And then it would blink all the reds. So very, very similar to the Gen 2 board where this one's showing uh, that it's just greater than 15% of course at green or 15% or greater. And, and then it blinks red. I never have figured out what makes these boards fail in this manner. And this Gen 3 seems to be the same way. At least it seems like it could be. But as I was plugging this one up, I had a mishap with the connector. And um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. One of the connectors come across. It actually messed the connector up on this board. So I'll go through and show you what we run into here. And I ended up having to replace this connector. One of the wrong connectors actually come across this connector. Just, just by memory effect of the wire. It just slammed in there and connected just right. Um, I couldn't believe it when it popped. Because uh, I've had them brush up against there before. But I've never, I've never had one of the wrong connectors line up and actually touch enough to make an arc. So... Now all the connectors actually worked out the same. It's no difference in the connectors. It was just one of those strange anomalies where it just lined up and the, um, the shorter connector just popped in there and uh, put some volts on the wrong pins. But I am going to take this Gen 2 board and I'm going to take the connector off of it and swap it. And then we'll continue troubleshooting even though there's probably more of the damage now thanks to this pack to my left. So in this video, you'll see us use some low melt solder. This is from Amazon as well as some from Northridge Fix. This is excellent low melt solder if you're interested. I also get my Amtec 559 Flux from Northridge Fix as well. We'll use some solder wick as well as two irons. I have my Avon 60 watt and I have the bevel tip, kind of like a medium sized bevel tip on here. I also have my Heiko with a round or conical curved or some called the bent tip which is one of my favorites and we're going to show real real quickly here what I went through here with low melt solder to, to remove the connector and then remove the good connector off the old board and then I'll solder the new connector or the good connector back on the newer board but I'm not going to take too much time on this video that's probably 10 or 12 minutes of its own so I'll just briefly go over here if you're interested in soldering the connector on all the steps i may have a separate video on that so we can continue on with troubleshooting here so back now with the connector replaced i realize we still have a short on the board and it's on the 3.3 volt rail and across this cap right here we do show a short so we have our our negative side where the battery connects going to this side and the other side should be coming off the 3.3 volt rail so let's just go ahead and remove this capacitor. I'm going to start off showing with just a little bit of low melt solder and with the soldering iron we can take it off. We'll take the next one off with hot air. Just see a comparison here and um, we can do it both ways. Hot air is definitely always easier. If there's nothing um, you feel like you could damage on the board So we're off. Now let's use hot air and let's take the good capacitor off the older board. And just like that, we're off. Let's clean up this board. We'll stick it back on here right quick. Even though I'm, I'm not even sure at this point if it cleared the fault or not. We'll just, since I got the video rolling, we'll just at least have video of it being put back on here. If it doesn't work out, I'll just pull it back off.
just a little bit of hot air and this little ceramic cap ought to just go down pretty quick here see the moving plates on its own here yep there we go beautiful quick and easy now that did not fix the short so I'm just back up under the camera here I've removed that cap and clean back up I'm going to remove this BL transistor now this BL is a MPN transistor pins one two three is base collector emitter respectively it's going to remove it with some hot air and see if our fault clears and the fault did not clear I'm just going to go through and make sure with my meter and diode mode that these LEDs are okay so I'm going to go across the emitter of this little one end transistor and I should be able to go to the, the outside of the um, resistors and they should light up and there we go we got a green step into the next green the next the next the next yep and this should be the red side so yep red and then the individuals but as we look, it's only one transistor firing these reds. So, so four of the reds are firing from Q67 here. So those will all be output at one time. This Q77 is the only one that's, that's lighting the individual red. I'm going to cut the light here. So maybe on camera you can see it even better. As we step through the green now, you can see it light up a little better. So those just fired off of that one transistor. All those check good. So, so this is where I soldered on some little fine wires to the pads here just to let me inject some voltage. So I want to put about 3.3 volts at one amp current limit in and see what gets warm on the board. I just think we're at that point. So the reason I've connected across where the capacitor is here is you can see where I have the green wire and I'm connecting my negative to the power supply. Up. That trace actually goes around to the capacitors. And where I have the red wire, it comes off of this 3.3 volt test point off this transistor and as mentioned this green one goes around on that trace to these caps here on the negative rail so basically we put in 3.3 volts where the 3.3 volt rail should be to see what gets hot with a current limit of one amp and definitely as i was suspecting the cpu is what's getting hot the little microcontroller if you can see here, my parallax is off to the left about an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, and I can't adjust it on this one anymore. Uh, you can see my finger here, my heat signature is off to the left. So you can see that it's definitely that microcontroller is heating up as soon as I cut the power on. And if I get close to it with the crosshairs, you can see that um, we're over 100, 110, 115C. So, yep. Definitely a microcontroller. I can still feel some warmth on it for sure. So this is not going to be a repair. But we did get to see some differences. And we did get to see the connector swapped out. And really interesting just seeing how the, the new board does not have hardly any troubleshooting information. Any screen printing on the top of the board. Or at least what I'm calling the top of the board at all. Where you can see the old board has the 3.3 volts written on there. If you switch them over, it's almost the opposite. The old Gen 2 board hardly had any screen printing on the back. And the new one's got plenty of screen printing on the back side. But, and of course, they moved that one microcontroller to the back as well. That used to be on the front. It controls a lot of this, um, probably with the balancing. So yeah, the microcontroller is a little bit different. But there's no way to even try to... Um, swap it out since it is a different microcontroller. I'm sure it would be a different program anyway, but I probably would have tried it to make, just make sure the short was gone. But but we did give it a temp. So Russell, I hope you did get to see a little bit about troubleshooting. Uh, sorry it didn't work out in the end, but at least we got to learn more about it, which is definitely my main goal. I'll have links in the description for a lot of the 
items we use here today in case you're interested as far as tools and low melt solder even these little precision jewel of screwdrivers that come in handy uh, going through the board cleaning and inspecting um, a lot of other things as well so again i will have another video about the connector itself as we spend more time showing the desoldering and soldering the new connector on if you're interested i'll try to have it linked in at the end of this video we did learn some things about this new third gen board i'm really glad russell sent it in so we could look at it I hope you did find it helpful today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and God bless.